Hey guys, so we are in Luang Prabang in Laos. We're gonna spend three days here and today we're going to discover the old town, see some colonial buildings, go in a couple of museums and yeah. So today we're going to do the city tour, we're gonna go up Mount Fusi, gonna go into the royal palace, see some temples, really good, really looking forward to it. And tomorrow is really nice as well. So in the morning, we're going to a Living Lands rice farm to see the full process of the rice harvest. And then in the afternoon, we're going to the Guangxi Waterfall, one of the most visited attractions in Luang Prabang. So yeah, there's our itinerary. I'm really looking forward to Laos. I bet it'll be exciting. So. The almsgiving is a very unique ceremony in Luang Prabang. It happens in early morning, around 5 or 6, and the entire town's monks from different temples go on the streets to ask for food because that's their breakfast. Local people as well as tourists give them food willingly, and before they return to their temples, they would sing a prayer song to thank all the people who gave them food. A stroll through the local morning market is a great day to start the day. The market is bustling with local people mixed with tourists and they sell lots of great interesting local stuff like insects and even weirder stuff, you know. The star attraction of Luang Prabang are its colonial buildings that are built by the French in the 19th and 20th century. These buildings are very beautiful and they are very pleasant to stroll past and maybe even go in one and have a drink, have a coffee, you know, and enjoy life in the old city. Many of these historic buildings are built in both local and French style. And many of the buildings are occupied by amazing restaurants and great hotels. The town is surrounded by mountains and two major rivers including the Mekong and the Khan River. This was the former royal palace which the French had built for the Lao King. The town is also home to more than 13 Buddhist temples. This is the Royal Temple on Main Street and this is another Buddhist temple that's quite good. The interior is beautifully decorated with mosaics and Buddha statues. And here we've got the most important and famous temple called the Wat Xiang Dong. Its interior is beautifully decorated and here you just saw my mom giving the offering to the Buddha. And here you can get a glimpse of the decoration style. It makes the temple look very beautiful and stand out among all the other temples. Every single temple in Luang Prabang starts with the word Wat because that means temple in local language. And here you can see on the walls which depicts the punishments of hell so here there's a huge knife over a man and these people are being boiled. Behind the colonial buildings of the main street, you will find little alleyways lined with traditional Laotian houses, such as this, they are built on stilts. Laos is still a fairly undeveloped country with lots of poor people living in houses like this. And here we are walking in a typical village at the foot of Mount Fusi, built in traditional architecture instead of colonial style. The greatest views are seen on top of Mount Fusi. It's truly breathtaking, with all the colonial style buildings, the mountains, and the two rivers. If you go to Luang Prabang, please don't miss Mount Fusi because it's surely worth a visit. Bicycle is a very enjoyable way to explore the city's old town and enjoy the natural scenery. Now we are at the tip of Luang Prabang Peninsula, 
So this is the Khan River and that's where it meets the Mekong. So it's quite a special place. You can see the mountains. It's quite beautiful. And here we have the bamboo bridge which is seasonal, only lasting from November to May. Every night, part of the main street turns into a handicraft night market selling all sorts of handicrafts. Of all the night markets in Southeast Asia, this one is not too big, but it's very attractive to visit. Rice growing is one of the most important things in Southeast Asia. Many people make a living by growing rice. So today we visited the Living Land Farm to learn about the process of growing rice. Firstly, we put some salt into a jar of water and then mix it with the water. Put enough salt so that an egg could float in the water. And then we put the seeds into the water and only the ones that sink to the bottom could be used to plant. Plowing the fields is an essential part of growing rice. This is typically done with a buffalo and it removes all the remaining grass and clears the space. We plant the seeds in a small field, but after a month, they need to be transplanted into a bigger field so that each one could get enough nutrients to grow. When the rice turns brown, it's time to harvest. We do this with a lotus knife, and then we do like this to get rid of all the rice from the hay. We carry it like this, and then we need to crush the rice with this tool where we have to use our feet. Next, we do this to remove all the shell from the rice. The shells are light so they will fly out. I'll let our guys explain the next step. You put in the normal water, you leave it there 3 to 4 hours. Or you can soak it overnight or all day long, so it doesn't matter. Minimum is 4 hours, maximum is 1 day or 1 night. And finally, we cook the sticky rice in bamboo baskets. And we need to regularly flip the rice so all the rice would get cooked. The people also use this machine to make sugar cane, so they are squeezed through the gap. It's typically done by a buffalo. We are at the Ponsi waterfall. It's surrounded by some rainforests, and it's really pretty because the blue. There's a really brilliant blue color in the water, so it's very unique. The Kwangsi Waterfall is one of the biggest attractions in Luang Prabang, and it's very pleasant to visit. The waters are very beautiful. They're, the mineral in the water gives that shade of blue color, and when you come here, you could go for a refreshing swim in one of its pools. So this is the main waterfall, it's the highest and surrounded by thick rainforest. If you can afford it, I highly recommend staying at the Amantaka Hotel. It's located in the heart of the old town and it is a French colonial building that used to be a hospital. So walking in past the lobby, we come to the hotel's excellent restaurant that serves both local and French cuisine. And exiting back to the lobby, turning right, we come to the library. And oh, sorry, here's the terrace area. Going straight, we enter the library that serves complimentary afternoon tea every day. So you can see the snacks on the table. And the library offers a really nice selection of books about the whole region of Southeast Asia. And here we come to my favorite part, which is the amazing hotel courtyard. It's really beautiful with all those chairs and a big pool. At night, those lamps are lit with candles and it's a really beautiful sight to behold. 
All the rooms, gym, and the spa are located along the courtyard. The hotel has more than twenty suites, which is not a lot for a hotel. And the hotel service is impeccable. They even have their own luxurious tuk-tuk, and you can hire bicycles from the hotel for free. Um, yeah, so it's a really nice choice to stay in. You can see the courtyard exp extends all the way back there, and yeah, the pool. Here we get the front view of the hotel lobby. This is the end of my vlog in Luang Prabang. Thanks for watching. Um, tomorrow we're going to Myanmar for the last part of our trip through four countries in Southeast Asia. So so far, Luang Prabang is one of my favorite destinations. Probably um, my second favorite after Angkor Wat. So I really look forward to exploring Myanmar starting from tomorrow for five days before going back home. So please stay tuned for the next vlog and thank you so much for watching. Goodbye, see you in my next vlog. <laughs>